to this special showers of blessing service today. It's our last day of our ongoing 21 days of prayer and fasting. Are you clapping? We are we have been on the mountain since the year began. Now we are gradually descending. Glory to God. It's time for the work to begin. Shout hallelujah. This year shall be nice for you. I say shall be nice for you. Did you see what Psalm 40 verse 1 and 2 says? Psalm 40 verse 1 and 2. Put it on the board. I want to, I want to say something to you. Psalm 40 1 and 2. Let us read it together. One to go. I waited patiently for the Lord and inclined unto me and heard my cry. Verse 2, what happened now? He brought me up also out of an horrible pit. Somebody here, you are coming out of an horrible pit. I say you are coming out of an horrible pit. You are jumping out of that pit today. I didn't hear your ever. Out of the mighty clay. I set my feet upon what? A rock. And what happened now? And established my goings. Your goings for the year 2024 is established. Oh, let me hear your amen. I say your goings for this year is established. I pray for you. Your life shall not be up and down this year. I didn't hear your amen. Everything that you are doing the year 2024, it shall be established. You will be stable this year. Can I hear your amen? So this is what has happened to you as you waited on the Lord on these 21 days of prayer and fasting. Shout hallelujah. You won't suffer this year. I said you won't suffer this year. So please get yourself ready as we are about to take off because your story is changing. Say with me, prayer and fasting empowers for exceeding grace experience. Can we say it together? See, I want your response. Your response eh, has a way of, of pulling it out from my mouth. When you are responding uh, correctly, it will be flowing. Shout hallelujah. Eh, say it very loud. I want to go. Prayer and fast empowers for exceeding grace experience. Exceeding grace in your life is already activated. It shall be speaking unto this year. I didn't hear your amen. That is taken from Luke chapter 4, 1 to 2 and verse 14. Our topic still remains understanding the mystery of prayer and fasting. We are looking at part 4 today. Understanding the mystery of prayer and what? Fasting. Shout hallelujah. Our text is taken from Daniel chapter 10 one to three understanding the mystery of prayer and fasting our test is taken from daniel one chapter 10 one to three let's read it together one to go what did bible say a thing was revealed unto daniel said now whose name was called beteshada and the thing was true but the time appointed was long and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. Verse 2. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all. The three whole weeks were fulfilled. Shout hallelujah. Say so he ate no pleasant bread. It took that time to find out what was going on. Everything God has revealed to you concerning this year, it shall come to pass speedily. As you engage on this prayer and fast, I say it shall come to pass. Can I hear your amen? You see, prayer and fasting are two vital weapons of the kingdom, both for enhancing our spiritual, our spiritual life and also for dealing with the challenges of life. Say amen. Prayer and fasting are two vital weapons, vital weapons, given to us to, by God. There are two prescriptions given to us to enhance our quality work with God and also to do what? To also increase, to deal with the issues of life. Shout hallelujah. So it's very, very important that as a child of God, 
you must be able to operate in that frequency. Therefore, I decree today, by this mystery of prayer and fasting, as you develop it as a culture, speed is your portion. I say speed is your portion. Let me hear your dangerous amen. Let me read to you Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 13, and then we read verse 10, and then we read 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Let's read it. Want to go? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and what? And in the power of his mind. Go ahead. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in war, in high places. Are you hearing now? Verse 13, what did I say? Wherefore now take unto you what? The whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. You are putting on that armor so that you'll be able to stand. You will stand up. I said you will stand. That's why I pray for you just now that God will establish your goings. He will establish your goings. Can I hear your amen? Now look at verse 18. What did he not say? Praying always. Pray what? With all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watch it thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. Shout hallelujah. In case you have prayed, it looks as if the answer has not come. Receive grace of perseverance. I said receive grace of perseverance. Can I hear your amen? Did you see that statement? Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto which one? All perseverance. How many perseverance? Uh, persevere. 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 Are you hearing? The enemy will not wear you out. I said you will not be worn out. I didn't hear your amen. Now, I want to show you something. Hear this. Everyone look up. Hear this. How to know when you are supposed to go on a fast. I want to show you how to know when you are supposed to go on a fast. Because at times it looks as if, uh, uh, you know, uh, church is the one that is asking you to fast. You know, you, you need to understand that there are indicators that shows that it is time for you to go and fast. If you are real, if you are a real believer who truly loves the Lord and you want your life to move the way it's supposed to be, there are times you will know, I think it's time to go and fast. I want to show you some of the signs, some of the indicators that shows that it is time to go and fast. Shout hallelujah. How many of you think it's a good thing? Do you think you want to know? Number one, how to know when, how to know when you are supposed to go on the fast. Number one. When you find it difficult to pray. When you find it difficult to pray, what do you do? It is time for you to go and fast. Because prayerlessness is a yoke. It's a yoke. The enemy, what the enemy does is to, the scripture is Ephesians 6, 18. We just read it that praying always with all prayer and supplication. So if you find it difficult to pray always, that it means that there is already a mountain on your prayer life. And the only way that mountain can live your life is when you go and fast. Say amen. amen. Fasting will destroy that mountain of prayerlessness. Then from that minute, when you begin to pray, the weight that was on your prayer life will be lifted because you are fasted. Shout hallelujah. Once you, yeah, let, me say, yeah, let me say this to you. Anything that has succeeded in capturing your prayer life has succeeded in capturing your destiny. Your, once you don't pray, you are like a car without headlamp. You don't see anymore. And we live in a very dark world. We live in a very wicked world. Are you hearing? Anything that is able to interfere with your prayer life has already hijacked you already. So once you see that there is a weight on your prayer, you can't pray anymore. You don't pray anymore. You want to pray. It's like, you know, but you can do all other things. Prayer has been hijacked. It is time quickly. Emergency. It's an emergency. It is time for you to go and fast. Shout hallelujah. It is time for you to go and fast. Look at it, verse 1. Men ought always to pray and not, and not to faint. When prayer becomes a burden, your destiny has been captured. 
Because there is a spirit behind prayerlessness. It happened to David. Look at Psalm 35 verse 13. Oh, I love this scripture. Psalm 35 and verse 13. Can we read it loud? One, two, go. What did he say? When they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. And go to the next one. I humbled myself, my soul with fasting. And what happened now? Oh, say that one again. I humbled my soul with what? And what happened now? Exactly. I humbled my soul with fasting. My prayer that was taken away before, my ability to pray before, the fire was rekindled. Shout hallelujah. I humbled myself with fasting. And my prayer returned to my bosom. Shout hallelujah. That is why fasting and prayer, that's why the two of them are, are needed. They must be used together. Are you here right now? The more you are, as you are giving to fast, your prayer life takes a new turn. Shout hallelujah. Your prayer life takes a new turn. And the more prayerful you are, the more the enemy are becoming uncomfortable around you. Shout hallelujah. This is very, very important. When you see that you are finding it difficult to pray, it is time for you to go and embark on a fast. And it's a matter of urgency. Otherwise, you will be so weak, you will be so tired, you will be so depressed, you will be getting angry at everything before it's as if the whole world is on top of you. Today, I decree over somebody's prayer life, receive fire. Oh, I say receive fire. I say receive fire. I said receive fire. I didn't hear your amen. So you don't use prayer to treat prayerlessness. You use fasting to treat prayerlessness. Can I hear your amen? You don't say, since you don't know, what, since you've been finding it difficult to pray, you cannot just start and, and jack it up like a machine. Today I want to pray now. Five minutes, you'll be tired. You'll sit down. You won't, it won't work. What you first need to do is to give yourself to a fast. When you, give, when you start fasting, the yoke will be destroyed. Then your tongue will be loosed. Power will come. Boom! Prayer start flowing. Shout hallelujah. That's, that, that's, that's what you need. That's what you need. Number two, how to know when it is time for you to go to fast. When you lack interest and zeal towards God and his house, it is time for you to go and fast. Galatians 4, 16 to 18. When you see that you are losing interest towards God and his house, towards the work of God, the things of God, it is time for you to go and, and fast. Because you are a child of God. Every human being is a spirit. Is that not correct? And so your spirit is supposed to be gravitated towards God, who is a spirit. Can I hear your amen? Please try to look up. And because you are a spirit, your spirit... Your spirit is supposed to be connected to the spirit of God naturally. Are you listening to me? Because that's where you are from. But when you see that there is a disconnection between you and the spirit of God, that you lack interest to about God, about this thing, about anything that belongs. No, 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 no. It is time. It is time. It is time. Shout hallelujah. Read it. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Gal the church in Galatia, they were entering a certain level of apostasy where they were becoming angry at every truth. They were no longer interested in, when, when you preach, it's like they're angry. Uh, Paul now said, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Something is going on. Go to the next verse, verse 17. They zealously, and I told them, they zealously affect you but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that you might affect them. What is he saying? Since you are no longer interested in the work of God, you are now zealously affected by the things of the world. TV, when you wake up in the morning, you used to pray before. But since mobile phone came, once you wake up in the morning, the first thing you grab now is a phone. You check your WhatsApp, uh, your SMS, who call you, all the day, everything. Brrr, no prayer, nothing. You are addicted to your phone now. That you are addicted to the Bible. You are addicted. Are you here right now? You can jump on the car and go any, anywhere else. But you see that work of God. He's telling you that these things, they seriously affect you. But not the right way. They will exclude you from life. They will destroy you if you allow if you allow yourself to be
to be gravitated towards those secular things that uh, instead of the things of God. Can I hear your amen? Then verse 18, what did he say now? But hear this. It is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And not only when I don't have to be around you to monitor you, to go to church. I don't have to be around you to call you, who do this, do that, do that. He was the priest, he was writing to them. Be, naturally be delighted. Be, change, carry this your zeal that you have put towards something else. Bring it into the work of God. Shout hallelujah. It is good to be zealously affected, always in a good thing. And not only when I'm present with you. Shout hallelujah. This is very, very important. Be naturally delighted. John 2.17. John 2 17, the disciple remember the zeal of my father's house as eating you. You can you 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 can do without church, but you cannot do without your phone, without your work, without TV, without show. Your spirit has to be in control over your flesh. And for your spirit to be in control, fasting helps to put your spirit in control. Say amen. This is very, very important. When you see that. You are no longer, your zeal your, and your interest towards God is finishing. You are under manipulation. They've arrested you in the name of the Spirit. Today, I command your deliverance. Let me hear your amen. Number three, when you notice unusual delays in any aspect of your life that require divine intervention, it is time to fast. When you notice unusual delays, everybody say unusual delay. Say very loud. When you notice unusual delays in any area of your life that requires urgent attention, it is time to fast. Shout hallelujah. Hear this. Delays is not that, you know, some, they say delay is not denial. Is that not what they call it? Is that not what some people say? It's true in a certain way, but any delay that is not addressed could become a denial. Are you hearing if you don't do something about delays, it could become, a, it could end up being a denier. Can I hear your amen? That's what happened in Daniel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 3. Daniel said, a thing was revealed to Daniel and the appointed time was long. That, are you hearing? The appointed time was long. long. Daniel said, no, 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 I cannot follow this schedule. It is too long. I have to go and find out, figure it out how to, how to fasten it. Can I hear your amen? And for you to know that Daniel was very wise, a thing was revealed to him, he, and then he knew that the thing was true. The Bible said, look at it. The, and the thing was true. Are you reading it? Is that not what he said? The thing was true, but the thing appointed time was long. He now went to go and fast to, to shorten the time. With his fasting, I'm sure you know what happened. Satan came and blocked the answer. You see, he came to block the answer for 21 days. So, you can imagine, it was not just the testimony that was hijacked by the devil. Even the answers was also hijacked. Are you seeing now? What if he didn't do anything about it? If you read this story, you will discover that it was not Daniel's intention to stay up to 21 days. It was because it was on the 21st day that the angel finally reached him. That's why he ended the fast. That means he would have stayed long. If, if the angel had, if, if the angel had, he said, the, the angel said in verse 12 and 13 that from the first day that you pray, your answer was, he said, fear no, Daniel. From, from the first day that thou did said that I had to understand, and to chase it, I said, thy words were heard. So it means that from that first day, the fasting would have been one day. It means that the fasting would have ended one day if the angel was able to reach him one day. Are you getting it that same day? It was because the enemy had the answer. That is why he delayed it 21 days. Whatever has been delayed in your life, lift up your right hand. Today, Shaka Barakata, I force it down to your direction. I force it down to your direction. I force it down to your direction. Can I hear your Amen. It was not Daniel who fasted for 21 days. No, it was 21 days because it was on the first 20, the day that his answer came. That was the day he ended the fast. Are you hearing? And so somebody asked him, we will not ask, Pastor, how long should I pray until I get answers from God? Keep praying until the answer comes. If the answer has not come, keep praying. If the answer hasn't come, keep what? 
Uh, why are you stopping when you have no, when the answer has not come? No wonder he said that men ought always to pray. Ought always to pray. That you pray with perseverance. Can I hear your amen? Daniel ended the fast because the angel reached him. Are you hearing? If the angel hadn't come, he would have still continued until the answer came. Shout hallelujah. Today your answers will come. I say your answers will come. Let me hear your email. This is very, very important. When you notice it's unusual delays, this is not what you and God dis dis uh, uh, agreed. That you should have been married by now. Things supposed to be coming by now. That business supposed to have come. Your income supposed to have increased by now. Your healing supposed to have come by now. When you notice these delays in your area, it is time to go and fast. Amen. It is time to fast. Don't see. Let me tell you something. Hear this. Anyone can become anything if you take responsibility with your life. Any of us can become anything. But if you watch your life, and this, it will just. It will just scatter like this. It will just be going. If you watch, if you just sit down, do nothing, and be confessing, hoping that God, let hear this. Government cannot repair your life. American government cannot repair your life. You have to sit down and take responsibility of your life. Can I hear your amen? The same way as you are driving, the way you keep your hands on the steering. You keep your hands on the steering so that the car doesn't go up the road. That's how your hands must be on deck for your destiny to go the right direction. Shout out the lawyer. It's very important. It's very, very important. Don't watch things. Don't watch things. When you notice unusual delays, and then it's time to fast. Shout out the lawyer. It was not Daniel's promise alone that was delayed, but his answers were also delayed. But his continuity compared a reinforcement. Today, as you continue on the altar of prayer. So, you don't say, oh, praise God, today is the last day. Today is the last day of fast. Hallelujah. Fasting has ended. <laughs> Did you get your answer? <laughs> Did you, as your answer has come, if it has come, congratulations. If it doesn't come, fasting has just started for, for you. You keep going. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> you keep going. <laughs> Somebody here, your story is changing. Your story is changing. That's how it is. You know, it's not something you, 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 you just do, you say, that's it. I, when I saw this revelation, I said, oh, this is where the enemy is cheating many believers. Many believers will say, I, 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 I fasted, I prayed, I, 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 I didn't get a testimony. I fasted, I prayed. That's not how, look at it. It is not, Daniel didn't stop because he decided to stop. He stopped because his answer came. <laughs> Are you hearing? And he was wise enough to continue. As he, did, as he waited, as he waited, he didn't know that. He didn't know that one devil somewhere has. I have come to discover something. Hear this. Whenever the enemy is aware about your intention for a promotion, there will be a reaction. Write it down. Whenever the enemy is aware about your intention for a promotion, there will be what? A reaction. Whenever the enemy is aware, about your intention for a promotion, there will be what? A reaction. Are you hearing? You will not believe every time. Look at the Bible. Oh, they came to tell this guy, one, one Jesus somewhere is born, king of the Jews. Ah, another king. Whilst I'm here, how can that happen? Herod's okay. They should kill all the male child born from two years old and all that. They had to take Jesus to fly away to Egypt. You remember the story? It's always like that. Whenever you have make, you are making attempt, as soon as it become, they become aware of your decision to move to another level, there will be forces that will rise up to try to keep you down. So you need to rise up at that time and engage more on the altar of prayer and you see your destiny breaking for Shout hallelujah. Oh, when I, when I, when I, he said I was when I told, told them in church, I just it's not that I said it, I just told Pastor quietly, this is what God is telling me to do. It's time for me to go and start church. To go and, God said I should go and do something different for him and all that. I, I think he not told all, all of because I just did my own quiet, told only him. And then I moved. I think I went into things spread. Come and see. Boom, ba, 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 from different corner. Ba, 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 all over. Yeah. What I've never seen before. I saw it for the, the past six years of my life. Yeah, because it has now become, it has been made public that this is now the new areas you are venturing to. You think the enemy will let you, 
we, 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 that's that tells you to pray more so that you can be dislodging and you can, so that you can survive. Can I hear your amen? It's very important. Don't be sleeping. If you sleep, don't, not you walk. I see your destiny breaking for. So when you number four, when you, when you should go on for addictions, addictions. So Romans 7, 18 to 24. When you notice an addiction, you are addicted to a certain thing that won't go away. You are addicted, addicted to any form of addiction. Pornography, uh, masturbation, uh, anger, malice, whatever addiction. You are so addicted to this thing, whatever. TV, it could even be TV, shows, or food, or food. Food. Addiction to food. Yes. Your mouth is running 24 7. If you, <laughs> it is time to fast. It is time to fast. Are you hearing? Yeah, addictions. All kinds of addictions. It is true. It, 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 before it becomes a yoke, fasting will break those yokes. Shout hallelujah. That's why he say Isaiah 58 from verse 6. This is not the fast that I've chosen. And then shall they, to break every yoke. Every yoke. Every yoke on your life, they are broken. I say every yoke on your life, they are broken. Can I hear your amen? Yeah, addiction. Addiction. Inability to just stay. Stay without having sex. All this, all this form of addiction. They are all, they are all yokes that need to be broken. Because if it is not controlled, you will become very useless. That addiction, that habit will destroy you. So you need, if you notice any form of addiction, anything that, has, that you can't break free, that you can't seem to break free from, I decree today by the force of God on this matter, they shall be broken. I said they shall be broken. I said they shall be broken. Can I hear your amen? Romans 7, 18 to 24. Let's read it. Let's look at this scripture. Romans 7. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Look at it. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I cannot. I find out that's addiction. I want to do the right thing, but I, I see myself not able to do. The, are you hearing? That's addiction. Go on. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then the Lord that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And that's an old wretched man that I am, who shall deliver. And you see now, there is a deliverance that is coming your way today. I said there is a deliverance that is coming your way today. Can I hear your amen? Now, quickly, let's look at some benefits of prayer and fasting. Some benefits of prayer and fasting. Shout hallelujah. Let's look at some benefits of prayer and fasting. Number one, it helps to crucify the flesh. It helps to do what? It helps to crucify the flesh. Hear this. Everyone listen. The greatest enemy of man is not the devil. It's the flesh. What is it? The flesh. The flesh. The flesh. It's not the devil. If you can, and the only, the only way, because the flesh is not born again, can never be born again. You only crucify it. You crucify it so that the spirit can gain dominion. Shout hallelujah. If you don't crucify the flesh, forget it. That is why, no matter what you do, the, 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 the two enemies of man, are, they are Satan, and number one, Satan, number two, flesh. But flesh is stronger. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. It is, and it is through crucifixion, crucifixion of our flesh that your spirit will gain power. And they that are Christ have done what? Have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. If you have not crucified your flesh, you are not going anywhere. 1 Corinthians 15, 31. Paul said, I die daily. I die what? It is a daily. Hear this. Do you know why he said, I die daily? I, that's why I told you just now that the flesh cannot be born again. It's a daily fight. You will keep putting this flesh under till Jesus come. It is a daily walk. Are you hearing? It's a daily walk. It's a daily walk. It's a daily walk. Shout hallelujah. Yeah. That's why you see some people, 
Some people, they say they are born, uh, they, some people, they are born again, they are good Christians and all that. She said, they see, they see some nonsense they can't take. They see, they see pride, uh, which is a, a work of the flesh. You all know what the work of the flesh. Yeah, work of the flesh. They are there. It is difficult to break out from the flesh because the flesh is the enemy, number one enemy of man. That is why what the devil does is to pass through your flesh as a gateway to enter you. Are you hearing? He always uses that angle to enter you. Every flesh in your and that is still strong around your life, they are broken today. Oh, your image is not sure. I said they are broken today. When your flesh is crucified, it allows Christ to live through you. Say amen. It gives Christ the opportunity to live through you. Galatians 2 verse 20. When your flesh is crucified, Jesus will be able to live through you. Galatians 2.20. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Live it. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Shout hallelujah. So crucifixion of your flesh is very important. Crucify your flesh. And we crucify your, our flesh through the altar of prayer and fasting. Shout hallelujah. Through the altar of prayer and fasting. This, this is why we have many people, we, we go to church, we have a heart to do the right thing, but because we are still full of ourselves, the flesh has not been taken away, the work of God becomes a struggle. And that's why we can't understand God very well. We can't understand what we are doing. It's very easy when people say, when people, I don't, I don't really understand this or I don't understand it. Oh, you don't understand. Start crucifying your flesh. You will start understanding, start understanding God. Because the flesh is the veil that is in between, covering you and God. Are you hearing? That's the flesh. If you take it away, you will understand God. You will see the glory of God. Shout hallelujah. And we crucify the flesh on the altar of what? Prayer and what? Fasting. I pray for somebody here today. Receive grace. Uh -huh. I say receive grace. Receive grace. In the name of Jesus. Number two is benefit of prayer and fasting. It engenders divine health. It engenders what? Isaiah 58 from verse 6 and 8. It engenders divine health. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Isaiah 58 verse 6, is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy bodies, and to let your press go free, and that you break every yoke? Please, let's take care of that. And then the next verse, when you do that, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy heart shall what? Spring forth speedily. Everybody say speedily. Thy heart shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. Is it not interesting? See, how many of you believe the Bible? How many of you believe the Bible? Did you see what he said? That one of the benefits of a fast is that when you fast, your light will break forth and then your head will spring forth. But you would have thought that when you fast, you will die. No. When you fast, the head, your Bible, the Bible says your head spring forth. You become super healthy through fasting. Shout hallelujah. You become super healthy through fasting. Can I hear your amen? How many of you want to be healthy? You want to live? You want to be healthy? Do you want to be healthy? Uh, that's the prescription. No. <laughs> that's the prescription. <laughs> that's the prescription. Go and fast. When you spring, when you, the, more, the more fasted life you live, the more healthier you become. Receive your grace right now. Can I hear your amen? Why is this? Because fasting opens your body to become the temple of the living God. And when your body becomes the temple of the living God, if your body is truly the temple of the living God, sickness cannot stay there. Can I hear your amen? First Corinthians 6 and verse 19. It's true. If you, don't, if, you, if you don't want to be sick, start fasting. Fasting delivers from sicknesses and diseases. That's why those of us who are following God, we are super healthy. Super healthy. Shout hallelujah. It's not that sickness does not try to come. When it comes, it doesn't have allowance. It will check, check, check. Nowhere to say you go. 
It will go up. It will, it will. That's why you should not be too close. Because when he fall, he can fall on you. And if you are not too strong, you start becoming sick. <laughs> are you hearing? You better be strong. You need that in fasting deliver. Are you hearing right now? It delivers you from sickness and disease. I receive your deliverance right now. I said receive it right now. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. Fasting, your body becomes the temple of the living God. And the sickness and disease cannot stay there. Every form of sickness and disease under the sound of my voice, I declare them check out right now. I say I command them to disappear in the name of Jesus. Number four, quickly, you enjoy the blessings. You enjoy God's blessings. When you, when you are giving to fast, you enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Joel 2, 12 to 14. You enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Joel 2, 12. Therefore also now said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Verse 13 now. When you fast, and I say that maybe the Lord will turn his heart and rend your heart and not your garment and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is merciful and slow to anger of great kindness and repent of evil. And verse 14, who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him? There is a blessing we get on the altar of prayer and fasting. Shout hallelujah. That blessing is falling on you today. That blessing is falling on you today. That blessing is falling on you today. I didn't hear your amen. Please take spiritual responsibility of your life. Take spiritual less responsibility of your life. Don't watch your life fade away. Don't watch things scatter. Take spiritual responsibility of your life. Begin to start doing spiritual exercise. Start fellowshipping in church. Start give, praying and start fasting. You see your life moving away out of obscurity. It's moving into limelight. Shout hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord over your life will begin to find expression. Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen? So that